Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to do a hack from the Dollar Tree store and it involves these right here and some other items you can also pick up at the Dollar Tree that will have you having endless strawberries throughout the summer. And it's also the best part of it, it is super cheap to do this. So let's head into the greenhouse and I'll show you exactly how to put this system together. So guys, not every Dollar Tree carries the same items, and so if you can't find these little small round spot sponges at your local Dollar Tree, I'll put a link to Amazon where you can get them because these are exactly the right size to put in our strawberry containers. So these stackable containers are the key component of the strawberry growing system, and they're really cheap. I think they were $1.25, $1.28, but they're super cheap. But a lot of people drill a hole right down the center of, of them and I don't want to do that because I want to create a water reservoir so in the heat of summer and when it's really hot I don't have to worry about the strawberries completely drying out because of our small tiny sponges but we have to do something a little different in our stabilization although it is a good idea to stabilize these with a bar stick or whatever you have a piece of bamboo you want to make sure you do it but not down the center because that's a mistake it will prevent your water from accumulating to a point where the strawberries can have a little bit of moisture when the sun comes out and it starts blazing down on them. Now a lot of people use these for different things. Some people use them for herbal. Uh, they might set it on their back deck. They might plant herbs in them or whatever else they want to plant in. But see they're easily stackable like this so they're very stable. But if you stack them really high like I'm going to be doing, you have to have a way of stabilizing them. So that's one key thing you need to remember that you don't want to do the stabilization bar in the middle but I'll show you exactly how to do it. What we're going to do is I'm going to use this tool right here and this is a great thing that I've used in the garden so many times. I'll put a link to it on Amazon. This tip heats up and we can get through plastic very easily. With a drill, sometimes a drill can overpower and it can cause the plastic to crack, especially if it's brittle or old. So I'm going to use this tool right here, the black cube tool, and I, like I said, I'll put a link to it down below. But this is going to help us create a little tiny, very maybe half an inch water reservoir that's going to help the strawberry survive the heat of summer. Now what I'm doing is, is I'm putting three drainage holes in this. Now these have built-in drainage holes that you could easily knock out with a pencil, but I don't want to do that. I want to leave that plastic in place. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to put three different holes in with this device right here. And I want it to be about a half an inch from the base there so there can be just a little bit of water sitting here. You don't have to worry about root rot as it will be very hot when you're doing this. And you can bring it inside and not water it quite as much as if you have a greenhouse garage in the extreme winter time if you want to preserve them throughout the winter. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn it on its side. So if you can see this, I hope it's still in camera view. Go up about half an inch and just take it and put a hole, three holes in. And you want to do this in a well ventilated area because it does put a little bit of, I'm sure, toxic smoke. So you don't want to be breathing that. So we have three holes and that will drain properly into the ones directly below. So if you water from above, or in my case, I have a micro irrigation system. I'm going to put it at the top, run it for one to two minutes in the dead of summer when it's really hot. And it will drip, drip down through each level and water each one properly. And I'm not doing all strawberries in this, but I'm going to do the top portion with strawberries. I have 10 that I've grown myself and I have some runners coming off the strawberry and I believe I created a video that talked about taking strawberry runners and creating entire new plants. So I'll put a link to that right here up above if I did. If you don't see a, if you don't see a link right there, you know that it's in all in my imagination. I did not create a video, but I, the, to the best of my memory, I believe I did. So I'll put that link up above. these small sponges are really great for absorbing just a little bit of water to prevent it from drying out so I'm putting three sponges in each one and that's going to help our reservoir obviously it's going to drain at our three holes we put there but there'll be just a small amount of water there to keep it from drying out and these sponges will also absorb just enough water so that on those extremely hot days where you've forgotten to water you may be able to extend that delay in watering time by one, two, or even three days, and you don't have to worry so much about your strawberries dying. Another great thing about vertical strawberries is, is I've had a super massive problem with ants around my strawberry plants. Even when I treat it with some of my organic solutions, I still have 
ants popping up around it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to only treat around the base of this and then the rest of it will be protected from the ants by going vertical. So I love vertical gardening because it gives me more space to plant vegetables, strawberries, whatever I'm planting, I can go vertical instead of having to have everything spread across a four by eight bed, which takes up a lot of room. Now, if you're planting something that needs frost protection, I would recommend buying these on Amazon and you can just use these year after year and you can put these temporarily over if you've planted seeds or a very small seedling you just put them in there and that will protect them from the excessive frost that might come in suddenly and these also then these particular ones i've used over and over and the little small plastic cap that allows air to escape is not on there but these do come with those and that is another thing that if they get too hot you can open that cap where during the day if you're at work some of that heat can escape the top of that but that's another thing you can do to protect small seedlings or if you've just started seeds you can use these as well i'll put a link to these down below as well to amazon i don't think they sell these at dollar tree but i could be mistaken but this is an amazon item right here so guys i think we've got it ready to go we've got our drainage holes in we've got all of our sponges ready to go and we've got our strawberries that we started in our solar cups ready to be planted so let's head back out to the garden in the raised bed and i'll show you exactly how to send it, assemble this and another way to prevent it from topping over in a high wind situation. Now this is the bed I use for herbs and I'm going to put the strawberries right in the center and this is my micro irrigation system that I'm going to have one of the micro irrigations running up to the top of this so it will water right in the center and it'll drain back down through all 10 layers. And like I said I'm not doing all strawberries on this but if you want all strawberries there's nothing to do it, wrong with doing that. Another way to prevent this from blowing over in a high wind storm is to go buy your big box store, Lowe's, Home Depot, or a hardware store. And these are often found in the garden center area. And it's just a, a stake, it's about five feet tall. And you're gonna put it in the ground and you're going to zip tie it to the top of this. You don't have to worry about zip tying it all the way down, just to the top and make sure this is in some really sturdy ground. If it's really soft or sandy soil, it might, tip over in a high wind, so you just want to make sure that you get one long enough based upon what type of soil you have in your garden. Now, in that time lapse, I showed you how easy it was for these things to fall over in a, even the slightest amount of breeze. So, no, not really. That was a complete accident. But what I'm saying is, is you absolutely need at least one of those stakes. And if you're in a high wind area, you may need two. So let me reassemble that again and we'll put our stake in the ground and go on to the next step. Now, one thing I will say about these is better to use a rubber mallet on them because the plastic can break through and I believe there's metal in there. So we just wanna put it as close as we can to the corner where we're gonna be able to zip tie zip tight from this to prevent it from falling over so let's get this in the ground and i'm going to get it as far as i can get it by hand and then i'm going to hammer it the rest of the way now you're probably wondering why didn't i get go all the way down to here it's pretty stable there but what i'm wanting to do is add maybe three or four more layers so i'm making a trip back to dollar tree this weekend to work on some more getting some more of these, but right now we're gonna attach this to there. I'll give you a close up of exactly what I'm doing. Hopefully the light breeze that's blowing won't blow it over again. Now the higher you go with this, like I said, you might wanna go with two or even three of these stabilization stakes. And I'm just putting two small holes. And because my zip tie is a little bit on the wide side, I may have to elongate our hole so we can get it back through. We're gonna need two of them. I'm going to put one on each side right there and then we'll run our zip tie through if I can keep this tower from collapsing a second time and let's carefully put our zip tie through I can do this without burning my hands because this thing gets really hot all right and then we're going to run that through like that and it'll be a little bit more stable once I get some soil in there because it's very light now so I think I have ran that through the wrong way. I'm gonna to need to flip it and redo that because we've got to run it back through the zip tie. So I'm just gonna run it through there. And I know that drives people crazy when you have to do something twice, but mistakes happen. All right, and we're gonna zip that through there. I'm gonna take a pair of scissors and cut that off. But 
once our soil gets in there, it'll be a little bit more stable. And I may actually opt for myself to go back and get a second tower because I want to make sure that this doesn't fall over. Excuse me, not a second tower, but a second um, rod from the Home Depot or Lowe's, wherever I got it from. So that's how you stabilize it. We'll move on to the next step. And I'll show you how to put the sponges and the strawberries in each one and like i said i'm doing strawberries up a little bit closer to the top because i want to keep it away from the ground because the ants are just terrible in my garden now what i want to do is i want to place one sponge in each of my strawberry cups and so we want to make sure that everybody's got one of these to keep it from drying out so we're missing two somewhere along the way there's one and there's two. So we have 10 ready to go at the very top. I'm going to need to cut this off when I find my scissors somewhere, but we just want to make sure we have it really tied up against our stabilization post because it will fall over the higher you go. Like I said, I think that most of the time you're going to probably want to do two of these, and I'll probably do that myself when I make another trip over there and find another one of these at my local Lowe's or Home Depot. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my strawberries in and... Since these cups are quite a bit smaller, I'm going to need my soil scoop and just put that around the side. Come in with my soil scoop. Just go around the sides. Obviously, you're going to want to fill it up in the middle as well. So it's going to take a little bit of effort and you're going to have to kind of be clever about putting it into the side so you can fill it up. But I think it'll work just fine. Just do two and then come in and fill up the center and then do your third one. So that way you don't have to uh, try to maneuver your soil scoop on top of your strawberry plant and destroy the top of it. So we're gonna install those 10 and we'll have it ready to go to our watering stage. So again, I think that probably two, maybe three of those would be better in soft soil like I have in this raised bed because it's not quite as firm. Previously, I had one of these and it was in clay soil and the stake was very stable. So in this one, the soil is softer. So I'd recommend at least two and maybe even three again if you're in a high wind area. Also, if you haven't passed your last frost state, remember you can use these. This one's a little bit large, but you can use a smaller size on the secondary layers. I'll put links to those below but you can protect your plants with these and prevent any frost from getting to them. Now, the last tip I have is for, if you don't have an automatic watering system, is to use a gallon water jug, drill the smallest hole you can in the cap, probably the size of maybe half the size of a pencil lead, and you wanna put it right in the center, bury it so it's well in there, maybe two or three inches into the top, and it will slowly release that water and drill a hole in the top of it so you can fill it up without having to take it back out. So you'll just have it sitting there. That will also help if you don't have the micro irrigation system like I have, but one of these gallon watering jugs will save your plants from completely dehydrating. Now also these are very handy at preventing your plants from getting frost damage. But as you can see, this one's too large to fit in there. So you can go with something a little bit smaller that'll fit and it'll protect a new plug or a new seedling. It's not gonna protect a large plant because it won't be enough room. But these little bells are so cheap. I think you can buy them in a multi-pack of something like 25 or 50. So just remember, if you're not past that last frost date, and you can check that on uh, weather.gov, and you can enter in your zip code and find out what your expected last frost date is so you'll know whether or not if you planted something that's a tender plant and it wouldn't survive even a light frost, get these little plastic bells. And like again, like I said earlier, I'll put them in the links down below. So guys, I hope that Dollar Tree hack helps you. Those are so inexpensive. You can do 10 or 15 of them and still easily reach them. Even if you're under five foot five or five foot six, they're still reachable to the top easily. But one thing I would say is that if you're doing it on a porch, a balcony, still you want to make sure that it's stable because there's going to be a lot of weight with a 40 pound bag of soil and 10 or 15 of those. So just remember, you want to make sure that you find a way to stabilize it, whether you zip tight to a post or a rail, whatever you're at. Uh, if you're on a balcony and you're multi-stories high, that would definitely be 
a no-no to put something close to the edge. So just remember, make sure it's stabilized. I would say that is your key and make sure it stays moist in the summertime and the heat. If it gets a lot of direct sunlight, use a moisture meter. I'll link one of those down below as well. And guys, I really appreciate you watching and I really appreciate all the new subscribers. Have a great day.